So could I tell more about yoga and the relation between yoga and nature religions? Um, in a way, um, all yeah, martial arts, all movement exercises um, are coming from nature religions. So all the martial arts and Tai Chi and also yoga, uh, they're inspired by uh, uh, yeah, the, the movements of animals. Um, because what people observed is that certain animals have certain powers, have certain talents. And um, people who have energetic sight, they can see that certain animals have certain uh, qualities which are better developed. So certain nadis which are more strong or certain chakras which are more strong. And uh, uh, yoga, shamanic dance or martial arts or all methods. Uh, to make those nadis, make those chakras more strong. Um, so ultimately the, uh, the basis is, uh, is very natural, it's very much in, within the nature religions. And often the uh, posture and the behavior is very similar uh, to the animal of uh, which power you'd like to copy into your own body or to merge into your own body. And also by making similar movements or and a similar, having a similar focus, you can also connect to the spirit or the collective consciousness of that uh, of that species. Uh, so there is a very strong connection between the two. Um, what you do see is that um, yoga has gone through the uh, the hermetic transformation. Um, so instead of just uh, moving and feeling what every movement does, um, uh, the intellects uh, came in and started to create a system out of it. And they started to develop a system and to see relations. And in a way, it became much more uh, mechanical in nature. Um, there is a lot of discussion, uh, which I heard also within the school, whether uh, yoga is light or dark, does it belong to the light cosmos, does it belong to the dark cosmos. Um, and uh, for me personally, I can say that um, uh, I think it is just like any natural power, it is neutral in itself. And it can be used for light purposes, it can be used for dark purposes. And the effect of yoga is simply development. It is that you exercise certain parts of the energy body. I'm not talking just about the, um, yeah, the, the using the the, uh, the asanas, using the pranayama. So this is very much on the transformation of the of the energy body. Um, yoga literally is uh, is work, and there are uh, various uh, methods. Uh, to uh, to work on yourself to improve uh, your energy body. Um, one of them is uh, is bhakti yoga. Um, bhakti yoga is uh, basically serving the gods. So if you uh, connect to a god or a goddess and allow them to inspire you, allow them to guide you and to manifest their power to transform the, the world and to teach what that god or goddess has to teach, then um, you will be turned into a better and better uh, a student of that power. And also your energy body, your consciousness, your physical body will, uh, will alter uh, to become that. So in a way you become an angel, a messenger for that power ultimately. And you can even grow into becoming uh, a god or a goddess or a demigod or a demigoddess yourself. Um, so this is one uh, method of, of self-improvement. Um, but generally um, yoga practices are considered uh, to be karma yoga, which is basically um, that you do something and there's just a cause and effect relationship between the two. So you build up a certain habit, you get used by, uh, in a way, by performing yoga exercises, your energy body gets, becomes better, and you get used to having a good and healthy energy body, and therefore in your next incarnation, you will have a good and healthy energy body, because this is what is normal for you. Um, and 
these two methods can in a way also be combined. You can say, okay, I will practice building up my energy body, but I will serve a higher purpose. I will serve a god or a goddess or an egregore. And then you can uh, mix the two techniques together. And it is mainly this act of, um, of combining um, uh, the yoga exercises in a way the physical uh, or energetically physical exercises with uh, meditation, with concentration, uh, with prayer and also with yamas and niyamas which are in a way oaths or vows, what to do and what not to do that you align yourself with a certain egregore or a certain god or goddess or uh, other ideals and um, for me this is also the essence of making uh, yoga more light rather than more dark because power itself uh, is something you build up in, in performing yoga so uh, people who say yoga is uh, part of the dark cosmos they focus on this they say you're building up uh, cds you're building up power you're building up control of your own energy body so you're growing in the dark cosmos but if at the same time you're uh, in a way giving your power to uh, a god or a goddess or another higher being or an egregore or something outside yourself and have the humility to turn yourself into a servant uh, then yoga can become a light path whereby yeah you uh, should be uh, very uh, clear of course that in a way your consciousness uh, has to grow at least as fast as your power because if the power grows too quickly then the power becomes a solution for all your problems and uh, you get too much in love with the state of being and which is very enjoyable because having a clear energy body, a clear consciousness, a good ability to meditate is very nice to have. They're very beautiful skills but they can also be, become an addiction. Um, what we see in, in nature religions is basically that um, in nature religions it is a little bit anarchistic so every, um, every person, every power chooses who to follow. And generally they uh, choose a power who's just a little bit more advanced than them. Uh, so it's very similar in a way to how the Luciferical cosmos is, uh, is organized. Also there are people are looking for an example. Um, in the nature cosmos it is a little bit more restricted in who you can take as an example because there really needs to be a connection, a brotherhood, uh, being one. Um, so in a way you're more tied to your to your group um, so your options are a little bit more limited but also the contact is much more deep if you are functioning in a, in a nature religion or in the nature cosmos and the same is also true if you're in a way wanting to uh, to practice yoga in a natural way so if you practice yoga in the uh, from the the system of the Luciferical cosmos you find the greatest yoga yoga master you can and you just try to do what he or she does and to learn from their example um, if you do it in a nature way you in a way need to find a person you have a connection with you are one with who whose heart is one with yours and only when you find such a person you can really learn from them because it's much more learning through um, absorption. You're more like a sponge, uh, absorbing the vibrations and the energies of the person you're connected to, rather than practicing and discipline and focusing yourself as you would do in the, um, in the Luciferical cosmos. And um, if you, in a way, want to do yoga and reconnect more to nature, uh, doing it in nature is a very good example or doing it together with animals is also a very good example um, because all the powers um, yeah the, the all the postures they serve to awaken powers and if actually the the object which in a way has the power is present then your posture will have a much stronger effect so if you do the cat together with the cat or if you do the 
dog together with the dog, then uh, uh, that will help. And um, it's also with normal postures, it is not as important as it is with developing uh, cities or extraordinary or extrasensory powers. Um, because many animals can act um, uh, much more uh, with much more skill and much more precision on the energy body than we can. So animals in general are a lot better at uh, influencing their own energy body and our energy bodies than we are. So uh, because they have a, uh, as I said earlier, a higher vibration, more harmony. So energy tends to flow from the animal to us. Um, in a very natural way. So also the knowledge and the power the animal has tends to flow to us if we can make ourselves re receptive to it. And how much we are able to change our own energy body to resemble uh, the animal or the tree or the stone, um, that also uh, creates a better quality of connection between us and our teacher, which can be the animal or the stone or the tree. And also if uh, there are certain very old trees, uh, not so many old animals, but also very old stones, and they retain a lot of the knowledge and experience of the things which were done there. So uh, many people find that by practicing something in a place where their master or their teacher or a great holy man uh, did the same thing, it will uh, really increase the quality of their own exercises and give them much more deeper um, experiences. So if you practice yoga in a natural way, the, uh, yeah, the location becomes very important and also the focus becomes very important. And instead of just focusing on, on Shiva, uh, you can also focus on various animals or various power animals or spirit guides or other gods and goddesses to guide you through the yoga practices. In general, I would say uh, also maintain the focus on Shiva, but add other gods or other deities to it. Uh, because Shiva, as the god of uh, destruction, also helps you to attain the purity which is necessary to um, connect yourself and open yourself up in a very safe manner. Hey, darling. Okay. Yeah, and if there are any specific questions about yoga, I'm not really, I love yoga, but I'm not very good at it. Um, what I do notice for myself is that the, uh, that connecting to the, to the crocodile is very helpful. <laughs> um, because the crocodile is very much uh, an animal which uh, is connected to the river, which waxes and wanes. So very much the cycle of renewal, it's a very feminine animal that way. So if you have problems with your own feminine cycle, uh, crocodile exercises and focusing on the crocodile is, uh, is very good to do. Um, and generally, if you want to increase sensitivity, uh, birds are very useful. And if it is about uh, uh, rhythm, about uh, stability, the large herbivores are very nice to, to work with to stabilize yourself. Um, the smaller uh, animals, um, they also help you a lot with uh, using your energy in a good way. So uh, cats, rabbits, uh, animals which really need to exert themselves because they're not all powerful. They really help you to develop your skill, to develop your focus. So depending on the type of thing you want to learn in your yoga exercises, different animals may inspire you or guide you in that.